Here's your before shot. Doesn't work. And then after, what did I do? Stay tuned. Hey, if you'd like to have some tips, tricks, do's, don'ts, and how the heck did that happen in a two-car garage, you are at the right place. This is the Firebird Restoration Station. My name is John. Right here behind us is a 1968 Firebird referred to as the Great Pumpkin. But doing a complete 100% nut, bolt, top, bottom, inside, out restoration in a two-car garage. Proving to you that it can be done and sharing you the journey. I guess in case you have any roadblocks or questions, concerns, or build a little confidence in your build because... I know sometimes these things may be slightly intimidating, but really, in all in all, they're not too complicated. So I wanted to share with you the journey of this car to keep you moving on yours. Now, what I did, though, a few episodes ago, we put the subframe back on the front of the body here. I was testing the uh, Rally 2 wheels there. It will not clear on the Great Pumpkin. Now, a back-in-black high school car here works perfectly fine. They've both been disc brake converted. Both use the Right Stuff part number, but this one isn't Right Stuff brand. So in their defense, they didn't say it would work with 14-inch wheels, but, you know, out of the box, quick throwing it on there, they look identical. But there's some differences that I wanted to show you in case you need to know or you're in the same position, what you need to do to get it fixed up. All right, let's get down in here and check out what we got. Now, this is the kit that I just installed on the Great Pumpkin. Uh, this is your standard, you know, GM caliper they use on all of them. Same rotor, that's all the same. This bracket looks the same, but that's where it's actually hitting. It's rubbing this bracket and all the high points. Now, why is it hit on this one and then not this one we're saying? Well, same thing. Same rotor, same caliper. But this bracket is actually shaped different. If you take a look here, I'm going to try to sight this on the horizontal. Shoot off crops to the top of the rotor. So the diameter of the rotor shoots straight back to the caliper. and doesn't even stick up any higher than the caliper mounting ear, top and bottom. So top and down here, it's real tucked up real tight. So this bracket visibly looks different. It's real tight, 90 degrees here. Now let's take a look at this one here. You get you sighted nice and horizontal, and then you shoot across the top of the rotor. Um, check this out. Uh, we're way higher than the caliper bracket, or the caliper ear here. So this is the problem. The caliper support or mounting bracket is not the same. Now this said this kit is a right stuff part number, but there's no right stuff stampings on it anywhere. I saved a hundred bucks on the kit. But unfortunately, this will not clear a 14-inch wheel. Now, we talked about some rims in old times past, a few episodes back. These two little designations stamped by the valve stem. You have a disc brake rally wheel and non-disc brake rally wheel. So sometimes that's the issue. Not the case this time because it clears fine on this car, but not this one. Now, the Great Pumpkin, I want to run 14-inch wheels. I've got rear drum, front disc, and I have a set of nice 14-inch rallies I'm going to restore and put on this car. Will not work with this setup. So... What am I going to do? Fortunately, I have more than one Firebird in the garage. We have the Back in Black Bird here, my old high school car. I'm going to sacrifice those caliper brackets and swap them over here to this car because this car is going to end up having 16s, 17s, 18s, not no 20s, but it's going to have some bigger wheels on it. I don't know exactly what yet, so I don't need it to clear the 14-inch wheel. Not to mention, rear disc brake does not clear for sorry does not clear the 14 inch wheel so again i don't need the 14 inch cow bracket on this car anyway so i want to swap them around that's what i'm going to do but i want to tear these apart i want to show the parts side by side in case you're shopping around for caliper brackets what maybe you can see or tell visibly what does and doesn't work we already know this is the problem is this piece here but if you're looking at photos online or to swap me can you tell the difference so i'm going to tear these both apart now Give me a few minutes and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison so that you can be a wise shopper when buying your parts. Okay, so what did we find looking at them? Eh, a quick little look here. Eh, they look similar, but I'm already seeing a few differences. Now, here again, as you can see the right stuff, they stamp their logo and their components. Um, this is the one that does clear the 14 inch wheels to clarify. Uh, this is the one that came with the kit with a right stuff part number. Like I said, in their defense, didn't say it would fit on 14 inch wheels, and it doesn't. But quick looks here. Uh, the one that don't fit no good, got a notch down the bottom here. So that may be a quick telltale visible sign if you're buying these used on the internet, eBay, find them in a swap meat box, or shopping for the parts. Check out for this notch. And looking straight down at him here, um, one of the biggest things I'm seeing here, here's where that top caliper bolt mounts in. It's uh, almost right up against the bend, that hole. And then shoot a straight line back. This one clears. Well, see how much space there is here on this one? 
and shoot that line straight back, it's actually kind of got like a radius up and it's a whole lot taller. So this is probably the only visible real quick reference that I can give you. Look for the right stuff brand, check make sure this is straight and ain't got no notch down here. That's gonna clear your 14 inch wheel. This one on the other hand, not so much. Cause here's the thing, keep in mind, these came on GMA body, F body, X body, all kinds of cars. So these brackets are out there and they're plentiful. So you might be able to get you a bargain, but I wanted to help you out and see what you're looking for. But again, I'm gonna go ahead and get these swapped around. I'm gonna put the 14 inch brackets on the Great Pumpkin and the bigger ones here on the back and black high school car for me, because again, it's gonna work great for my purpose, but just maybe save you a headache. I wanted to share this stuff with you, but uh, maybe when you're shopping, uh, you know what to look for, but uh, even side by side, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference in height. If you were to stack these up on end, they're still about total same height. It's weird how this one works and this one don'ts works. I mean, we're only talking a couple thousands of clearance issue, but again, I'm gonna get this thing swapped around. I'm gonna share this with you and keep on plugging away on the old great pumpkin here. Hey, so there you have it. The Great Pumpkin has the ability to run 14-inch wheels. Check this out. Nice and quiet. Now, it doesn't sound like a train wreck happening here rolling or trying to attempt to make it roll because if I would have torqued the lug nuts, it wasn't going to operate whatsoever. So, hope this tip helps you out in buying the right components, shopping for the right components, or knowing what doesn't work will definitely help you out. I hope just the same now. Probably not the most coolest, most excitingest video in the whole wide world, but maybe you learned a little something. And of course, now what we're going to do next, going to start working on getting the rear axle position into this car. Show you the easy way here, how I do it here at home without scratching the paint and tearing it up. That's going to be one of the next go around. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see how that goes down just the same. And we'll keep plugging away and getting this thing back together because the point of this channel was doing a restoration in a garage, proving to you, one, it can be done, and two, some of the tips, tricks, and how to or how not to do it. Because I like to say the right way, the wrong way, and then the VVJ, VVG way, and you guys make your own conclusion on how you'd like to tackle your project. Of course, any questions, hit me up in the comments down here. I'll definitely see about getting a video or share what I know about that topic on the next video or here hopefully soon. I've got a handful of them i got to work on. We're going to do those in progress, like body panel alignment. Working on getting this thing where it's on all four wheels so I can put it on the ground with all the weight of the engine, suspension, and everything on the car to set the body gaps. Because that, to me, is key. Nice straight line down the side of the car when you side it. That's what I'm shooting for here. So I want to share those tips with you just the same. Uh, so until then, I guess I want to clean up a little bit of my mess here and finish putting the other side back together because you guys don't need to see that. And then we'll get to working on that rear axle and grab the camera and uh, we'll see you guys then.